Okay, let's go to the pros and cons graphic that we have put together. And Kelly, notice the the graphics here. I mean, you know, this is this is an area where we've upgraded your segment. Did did David do that or did Billy? Billy Billy had this one. <laughs> here, here's what happened. Billy. David David put the information down. I just added the picture of Will Levis. So just kidding, was, just kidding, Billy, man. I love it. Was you, a man. team I, effort. Actually, yeah. did I not put the information down? Well, David put it on the graphic itself. Okay. You, of course, gave us the Seems original like a info. lot of transporting of information. We go from George to David, David to Billy, and then we have this. Boy, this is riveting. Cutting edge. Fascinating. So, okay, there's no doubt the guy is built. You know, he, he, he's definitely built like a little bit of a truck. And yeah. Even by his own words, he's got a heck of an arm. That's right. And I'm with you. What I saw of him in college, this is a guy that really wants to win. He's a tough competitor. Yeah, all those pros there, and there's many more that you could have put on there. But, uh, you know, the gritty competitor is the thing that you love as a quarterback. I mean, he's got – he's physically gifted. We know that. We've seen him play in college. He played in the SEC. Uh, he can run around. He can make people miss. He can run over guys, which I don't – recommend he do that in the National Football League. You know, it, it takes some adjustment, getting used to that game, and don't try to run over guys because if you do that consistently, you're going to get hurt. Uh, he, he even said that, you know, whether it was a one-time thing or not, he, he's got an incredibly strong arm. You know, that can obviously be a, a pro. It can be a con is in that – he tries to fit it in windows he shouldn't fit it into sometimes where he's late on his throws. Shouldn't do that because in the National Football League, the, the windows that you're throwing in, it's huge in high school. It, it collapses a little bit more in college. And then the pros, those windows get really, really small. So that's where you get a lot of interceptions, which he threw, you know, in, in college. And then, you know, this is the thing that I was, you know, I, he's a gritty competitor. He wants to win. You can tell that. You can tell by watching. He hates losing. When you get a guy that hates losing, uh, that's why I love Lamar Jackson. I like watching him. I did not have his game. Uh, he does things that I can't do with running around. He's, he's, he's learning how to throw the ball better. But the guy is such a competitor. Man. You love watching a guy like that because he hates losing, and he gives his team every opportunity to win, even when they're down. You know, in the, at the end of the game, he's competing to try to – you know, get those guys down there where they can score. So I love watching Lamar Jackson because there's no bigger competitor in the league than that guy is. Uh, you look at his cons, George, like very inconsistent with his play. I mean, he's up and down. You you, you want to be consistent. You know, Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, all those guys that are really good, they're very consistent in what they do. And I just – I saw some inconsistent play with him where – you know, he kind of stares at one re one receiver, and then you know he'll throw into some bad situations, and he'll he'll play good one game, play bad the next game. You just can't do that. You got to have an even keel. Uh, I think his accuracy problems are evident. You, you all you got to do is just turn on the tape. Uh, and we talked about that with Anthony Richardson. You asked me the other day, uh, but with with accuracy comes footwork. You got to have good footwork in. He's got to get in there with uh, with Tim Kelly, the new offensive coordinator, and his quarterback coach. And you know they got to work on that stuff. They got to work on staying in the pocket. You know, being able to move around. And then, you know, hopefully he doesn't get injured. Uh, hopefully he can get this turf toe thing under 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 wraps. Uh, you know, and he can stay injury free. I don't I don't know. He went through a bunch last year, but you know those are the things that I see with Will Levis. Kelly, let me let me go to the middle one, the accuracy thing, because I used to believe that, look, by now you are what you are and there's not yeah. going to be a lot of change in it. But then all of a sudden I see Jalen Hurd, yeah. who, you know, at Alabama, Jalen was a very inaccurate thrower and somebody somewhere has helped him make an improvement that's gone from here up to the ceiling. I've never seen a, a quarterback improve their accuracy more than him. First of all, how much does does Levis need to work on it? Well, you have to work on it because if you're not accurate in the NFL, you, you're not you, you just can't play. I mean that that's what I say, and and I tell people I, I'm I'm giving you this like 
when you're in high school, you know, I used to tell guys on flat routes, they would, they wouldn't throw it. And I'm like, he's open, throw it. Well, there, there's a kid that's, you know, three yards from him. Well, they don't think that's open. That is open in high school. Well, when you get to college, that, that really gets, it gets closer. And then when you get the national football league, if a guy beats him and he's still on his back, he's open. So you got to be able to make those throws. That's what makes, you know, the Aaron Rodgers of the world and the, you know, the Drew Breeses of the world, um, you know, Patrick Mahomes, they're very accurate with the football. And there's going to be times where you're going to have to move in the pocket. You're going to have to, you know, he can make plays with his feet, but you got to be accurate on the run as well. And uh, obviously the guy in in Indianapolis who was with Jalen Hurts last year, you know, he and the, he and the head coach, both offensive-minded guys, they literally helped Jalen Hurts. I remember going down with my coach from college, Alex Robbins. We went down and watched practice at Alabama, and we're sitting there shaking our head because that was when Lane Kiffin was the uh, was the offense coordinator, and I could not believe watching Jalen Hurts just how much, you know, his feet were off the ground and his shoulders were like this. Like he goes back and his shoulders up, and then when you when your shoulders are like that, you're not going to be consistent with the ball. Your shoulders need to be level all times. And, you know, I, I tell kids when I work them out, like you could put a two-by-four over my head, but my head never hits it because I'm never up and down. When you're up and down and you're, you're doing that, you're not going to be accurate with the football, and that's what Jalen Hurts was, and that's what makes it so impressive. I know the guy was a hard worker, but, man, he's really evolved his game into something different, and, you know, he's, he's turned himself into a really, really – obviously witnessed – by his contract that he just got. But, man, he is a real – he's gotten to be a really good, accurate thrower of the football. Kelly, didn't the improvement really start at Oklahoma? I mean, I started may to have. see something better. Yeah, may have. I mean, it may have started at Oklahoma. I'm sure with Lincoln Riley. I mean, he'd been around it. Uh, I'm sure it did start there. But, you know, I think uh, when, when he's gone to uh, – <clears throat> when he's gone to Philadelphia, those guys really helped him too, they, you know, because he, he kind of had the same problems his first – you know, his first go-round, then last year when he became the all-time starter, man, his game his game is just so impressive to me. Just It used to make me angry watching him when he was at Alabama when he wanted to take off running. And that's what, you know, I tell young quarterbacks, at some point you have to learn how to play the game. And you can use all this athleticism and all this athletic, but at some point the Lamar Jacksons of the world, the, you know, the Anthony Richardsons of the world, the Will Levises of the – yeah, you've got to learn how to play the game. you got to learn how to read a defense, get the ball out of your hand, because not everybody's got that. And even though Anthony Richardson is a specimen, if he keeps – if he runs around a bunch, there's guys in the National Football League, I tell people all the time, that are trained killers. And I was not wanting that. I was one, two, three, Tom Moore. One, two, three, throw it in the stand, son. You know, that was me. You know, so uh, at some point you have to learn how to play the game.